Let's take a look at library features in SOLIDWORKS and user-defined features in Creo Parametric. Here's the concept behind this. I have a part open. You can see that we have a cut feature in it. The sketch consists of one big circle and four smaller circles. I use this in cabling. This is a panel cutout for a C shell D38999-20 wall mounted connector. Hey, anytime that I want to put this size connector in a wall, I need this cutout. So to save myself time and effort, rather than creating this sketch and this cut every time that I want to use it, hey, let's save that out so that we can place it in other models later. The way that you do that in SOLIDWORKS is you can start off by selecting the feature. Here I'm selecting the cut. If I want to, I can also select the uh, sketch as well. Let's take a look over on the right hand side of the screen. We have a vertical toolbar of about seven icons and one looks like a stack of books. This is for the design library. If I click on it, the panel will open up and here you can see that we have a hierarchical structure and we can see our design library and there are a number of folders that are provided for you. If I want to, I can select this level and then say, hey, I want to create a new folder and I will call this cabling since these will be for my cabling features. So I make sure it's still selected. And then if I want to add those different features to the library, well, let me select them again and go back to my library, make sure the folder is selected. And then there's an icon that looks like a plus sign on a stack of books that will add it to the library. And then we get a property manager that opens up on the left hand side of the screen. It says add to library. Here we have the items to add. For the file name, I'm going to change it a little bit. This is going to be for C size shell connectors. And there's the folder it will go into. If you take a look at the file type, here it's going to be saved into a file that ends in .sld. LFP. I guess that's library feature or something like that. So you can see that you have it there. If you want to, you could write in a description. In some situations, you can define the references. For some reason, the way that I create this, it's not allowing me to select the placement references, but this is good. Let's hit the check mark. And then we can see in the cabling folder, here is the C shell panel cutout.sld LFP. Now let's take a look at how we place this into a model. Let me go into another part. And again, it's just a panel. And let's say I want to do a wall mount of a connector in an assembly later on. Let me click on the design library. And then here we have the C shell panel cutout. To put this in the model, I can grab it and then just drag it and drop it on the surface where I want it to be. You get a little preview window of where it will go. And then for the references, it's looking for one edge reference. In the smaller window, you can see what it's highlighting and I can say, hey, that corresponds to this edge. And then for the other edge, that corresponds to, in this model, this edge over here. And it's placing it using the original dimensional values. If we go to the size dimensions, you can override some different dimensions. I happen to know that this dimension locates it vertically. Maybe I want this to be a value of 50 instead. And this dimension locates it horizontally. Hey, let's change this one as well. And then we have it where we want it to be. And then before I hit the check mark, just want to show you that there's not that much to this again is very straightforward in terms of how you can place this in another model let's hit the check mark and so that's how you do it inside of SOLIDWORKS let's jump over to Creo Parametric to see what's roughly the equivalent of a library feature okay here I am in Creo Parametric I have the same basic part it's got the same basic sketch with a cut in it. Again, I want to use this over and over. The way that you create what's called a user-defined feature in Creo Parametric is by going to the Tools tab 
and then we have a command for UDF library. And one thing about this, this is a command that for whatever reason, PTC has chosen not to update in over 20 years. It's still pretty powerful. I will click on the create button. And first thing it does is it asks me for a name for the UDF. Let me call it C shell panel cutout. And then hit the enter key or the check mark. And because it's using this old style interface from like Pro Engineer 2001 and earlier, we're being asked some different questions over here. And a lot of times people get into this whole thing about, hey, Dave, you're doing the series on SOLIDWORKS and Creo Parametric. Which one is winning? Or, hey, it looks like, you know, SOLIDWORKS has the easier interface. That means it won. And it's like, no, that's, that's not what I'm getting at with this video series. And I think I mean, need to be a little bit more explicit about it. I'm doing this theme about the simplicity versus functionality. And so you could either have one or the other. It's really hard to have both of them. And so, yeah, you'll see different things like the way of creating a UDF feature. It's not as pretty, but there's a lot more to it. And so let me start walking through this. The first thing it wants to know is, will this be a standalone or subordinate user-defined feature? What that means is, hey, this can exist on its own in its own special kind of file. It ends in .gph, or you could make it subordinate to this particular part model. So if I change this part model, I can update the UDF in the library. In this particular situation, I will choose standalone. And then we have the option to include a reference part. Remember in SOLIDWORKS where that little window opened up that showed how you place the library feature in a new part. This here gives us a choice whether we want to have that or not. And if we do include a reference part, that will end up being stored in the same location as our user-defined feature. I'm going to say yes to this. And then we get this old style with model dialog box for defining our user-defined feature. The first thing that we need to do is select the features that are going to be in here. So I'm going to select these two features using the control key. Let me get out of my selection here. And then it has me write prompts for the different references that are necessary to locate these features in the model. And I am going to call this one the placement surface and hit the enter key. And then it highlights a, another surface. I will call this one the bottom, can I spell today? Bottom surface. And then we have a, another reference and I will call this one the left side surface. I was wrote right side surface. And then here is the body that it will be placed in. I will just change this prompt to body. And so then you have an opportunity to change the different prompts that are written. I'm just going to hit done return out of there. And that's all that's necessary in order to define a user defined feature in Creo Parametric. But I want to show you that there is a whole lot more functionality that you have available for doing this in Creo Parametric. So we defined our features, we defined our reference prompts, and then you could have variable elements. In other words, you could have different aspects of the features inside of the UDF change. So for example, maybe you want someone to have different depth options that are available for some of the different features. Here we have variable dimensions. In other words, someone can change different dimensions when they're placing the UDF in a model. Hey, I actually want this. Let's double click on that. And I'm going to choose this dimension and hold down the control key and select that dimension for locating the UDF in the model. Let me hit done return and done. And then the prompt for the values. Let's for the first one, let's call this the horizontal dimension. I think that's what it was. And then we have the vertical dimension and you could review them if you want to. Let's see for the other different things that you have in here. 
Uh, you could have variable parameters in the model. You could also define a family table inside of here. And so with a family table, that way you could have different predefined variations of this. You could change the units of the UDF if you wanted to use this in different unit models. And in some situations, you can even define pro program inside of a UDF. So there's a lot more functionality inside of here. Let's click the OK button. And it says that our group has been stored. Let's hit the Done button out of there and take a look at placing this in another model. The way that we place this in another model, if I go to the Model tab, here we have a user defined feature command. When I click on that, it goes to my folder with my different UDFs in here. And this is the one that I just created, the seashell panel cutout. Let me click the open button. Here we have a dialog box that gives us a lot more different options. So for example, we could make the features dependent on dimensions of the UDF. So this is a dependency control. Here we have advanced reference configuration, which allows us to configure how we want to locate the new features in the model. And here we have the option to view that source model that we store that can help us place it in a new part. And then for defining the different references, let me make this dialog box or this window a little bit smaller. And so for the necessary references, I want it placed on this surface. And then for our next reference, wants us to select the bottom surface. Let me zoom in and grab the surface that I want to use for dimensioning it. Then we want the left side surface. Let me grab that. And then the body that it's going to be added to. We can see a preview of the features being created. Now let's go and take a look at the variables tab. And so here we have the first dimension for the 40 dimension for locating it. Hey, let's plug in a different value. Maybe I want that to be 120. And then for this dimension, let's change that dimension to a value of, say, 60. And then that is good. If we want to, we can go to the Options tab. So here's where you can do some additional scaling. Then you have control over the other dimensions that are available in these different features. You can choose to unlock them so someone can always go back and change the dimensions that are in the user defined feature. You could choose to lock them so that someone can see the different dimensions, but they're not able to change them. Or you can hide the dimensions that were not varied. In other words, someone can't even see the different dimensions that belong to the user defined feature. When you're placing it, you have the ability to edit definition of any of the different features. So for example, let's say I wanted to change a depth option for the extrude feature, I could do that. The adjustments tab is grayed out. The properties tab allows you to change the name of the group here, but you can always do that in the model tree. There is an auto regeneration and a check that gets performed. Let's hit the check mark in order to place it. Here we have the group of features in the model tree. So that is how you can place the user to find feature. So yeah, there were more steps in creating it. There were more steps in order to place it, but there's more functionality in terms of what you can do with this. And just to show you another example, since I do a lot of cabling, I have a general panel cutout user defined feature. Let me just click OK out of these. And this one that I've made has a family table built in it. So I have all the different configurations that I want, depending on whether I'm using a front mounted connector or a rear mounted connector and for all the different connector shell sizes from A through J. And so that's just one of the examples of additional functionality that you have with UDFs inside of Creo Parametric compared to library features in SOLIDWORKS. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed 
when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.